quantum devices, they are actually very big. We can hold them in our hands, um, you know, they are uh, centimeter by centimeter in size. Uh, and yet, with the engineering and the design principles we put in, and the environment we put them in, they are fully quantum. Hi everyone, today we are here with Professor Gao from NUS Department of Physics, and I'm Isra Ho. So, we'd like to start by telling us a little bit about your research mm -hmm. and how you started on your research journey. Okay, sure. So, um, I work on building devices for the future quantum computers. Um, and the type of devices we use are uh, actually electrical circuits, but we design them in a very specialized way so that they can be um, used in a quantum computer. And something that's very interesting about um, our hardware is that we actually have to cool them down to very low temperature. So you can think about it as putting something in a very cold fridge, much colder than what we use at home. Um, but with the help of this fridge, uh, we're able to essentially use electrical circuits um, to bring out the quantum properties. Yeah, and how did I start on this? Well, um, I think it all started with um, just I think an interest in physics uh, since school days, as well as, um, as well as I, I guess I always had this urge of uh, just tinkering with things. So my research focuses on the experimentation and the implementation. So that means we do a lot of hands-on work. We build things, we debug them, we uh, iterate and make new designs and um, new ways of putting things together. And um, so that combines what I like about physics, which is kind of the conceptual elements, uh, learning about the very mysterious concepts in quantum physics, uh, as well as these hands-on practical aspects of being able to build something with my hands and, and tinker with them. And then what led you to start inspiring girls and women through STEM? Um, I, I don't know if I'm inspiring anyone, but uh, uh, I think a lot of it is uh, just go, go, during my educational journey, I think I've come across many good teachers and good mentors that help me a lot. So now that I'm in a position where I can play such a role for the younger students, um, I really enjoy the opportunity to do that. And it's part of um, paying it forward, right? So um, I think with all these efforts and precisely what you're doing now, uh, we can get the word that science is fun and science is very exciting to pursue to um, all the very passionate and interested uh, young women out there. And then what were some challenges you faced as a woman in STEM and how do you mm -hmm. overcome them? Um, so I think they, um, in general, I wouldn't say there's very uh, out, you know, very many hurdles that are um, that's really, really standing out in my memory during my process. Um, but I think I've been very fortunate to have mentors and support along the way. Um, some things I did notice uh, during my education as well as my research career so far is that um, because there are so few women, uh, in fact, the more specialized we go, uh, the fewer they are, um, there is a lack of um, network and, and uh, general support, right? Because it's very difficult sometimes to uh, walk into a room full of uh, people that look nothing like you, that sound nothing like you. Uh, and uh, and it, it's not necessarily they're mean or trying to be, make things difficult, but it's just naturally a little bit more intimidating um, being the only one uh, in a room that, that dress a certain way, that speak a certain way. Um, so, so I find, I, I do find this uh, somewhat challenging, um, but I guess over time it's getting better with a lot of the efforts that we're seeing, we're, uh, we're doing, we see a lot more women in positions of power, uh, in positions of leadership in science. We also um, start to have more awareness among the uh, male allies. So they are more conscious as well when uh, they notice that we are uh, the minority, we're underrepresented. So uh, there's definitely more inclusion um, in the in the research scene. So um, so yeah. So overall, I think the hardest part had been to just overcome that initial fear, intimidation, um, and to make an active effort to find support and mentorship to uh, to to help ourselves. 
And then to you, what would be the most fun part of your day? Um, I think the most fun part is to work in the lab. Um, so uh, now as, a, as an assistant professor, a lot of my responsibilities also involves administration, um, teaching, and, but uh, I do still have a, a big chunk of time that I can you know, spend in the lab and actually do hands-on work with my students. Uh, and I think this is the most exciting part because we are solving problems that really have no known solutions for. Um, so we're trying all these creative things and, and, and these new, sometimes crazy ways of doing certain things to see if they, uh, they will lead to the intended outcome. Uh, and I think this step of you know, exploring these possibilities and building the prototypes is, is what makes it most exciting for me. And then what was one fun fact about your research on quantum physics? Ah, um, yeah, so one fun fact I would say is that uh, typically we think about quantum physics as something extremely small. Uh, one particle, you know, one single atom uh, or one single electron, right? So something so small that you could hardly see with your eyes. But with our quantum devices, they are actually very big. We can hold them in our hands, um, you know, they are uh, centimeter by centimeter in size. Uh, and yet with the engineering and the design principles we put in and the environment we put them in, they are fully quantum. So, so I think that's a very uh, counterintuitive and fun fact about what we do. And then for all the young scientists out there, mm -hmm. would you have any advice for them, especially the girls? Uh, yes, I think um, looking back, what benefited me a lot, and I would like to really share with uh, with other uh, girls that might have, might, might have been going through similar experiences, is the is two things. One is um, it's really important to explore our interest which essentially um, means that just try many things, um, be bold. It's okay if you know, it turns out you don't actually like it or it didn't work out, that's fine um, because the more we explore, the more we uh, gain the experience and knowledge and understanding about what we like and what we don't like, knowledge and understanding uh, what we're good at and what we're not good at. Uh, and that really helps in the later years to decide what to pursue, what we're, you know, to figure out what we're passionate about. Uh, the second thing is, uh, you know, listening to advice and especially from people who are older than us, like teachers, parents, is important. Seeking their guidance is very important. But sometimes it's also important to stick to our guts, you know, uh, because there are still some stereotypes and maybe slightly outdated uh, impressions, right, about certain career paths that may be true 50 years ago, but not true anymore. So if we conform too much to these conventional wisdom, it might actually limit us in, in certain ways. So, so if you have a strong gut feeling about, you know, this is something I'm, I will be really good at, I'm really passionate about, just go ahead and try it. Even if someone tells you, oh, maybe it's not the best path for, for a girl, or it's going to be very difficult for you, you know, it's okay to sometimes discard or ignore <laughs> some of the advice as well. Yes. So we've come to the of the end of our questions and thank you so much for no, no, it's my pleasure thank you